Hey everybody, this is John for Pioneer Nexus MTG coming at you with a new terrifying, or is it exciting, deck in the format. That being Red, White, or Boros Hammer Time. Now, this is a deck more notable for its modern counterpart, but there have been some recent innovations that have made the deck a little bit more at least playable in the Pioneer format. Now, the list you're looking at is from, I believe, roughly May of last year. Not a deck that's put up a lot of results. Um, for the Hammer Time deck to be good, it needs, one, to be able to find the hammer, and two, to lay the hammer down. Now, Colossus Hammer, on its own, is a plus 10, plus 10, creature loses flying. It's a one-mana artifact. Not hard to cast. Now, that eight-mana equip cost more than you can generally justify in constructed magic. So, you try to find ways around that. In this version, Sigurd is a version that sees play in the modern format. Allows you to instant speed, attach equipment whenever it comes into play. Allows you to basically turn each hammer into a one-shot equipped to any creature. Uh, the other card the deck would use would be Resolute Strike. Target creature gets plus two, plus two in the turn. And if it's a warrior, you may attach an equipment you control to it. Now, this is kind of a three-card combo with Warrior Creature, Hammer, Resolute Strike. But, you know, if you look, most of the creatures in this deck are generally Warriors. Kind of fits the mold of what the deck's trying to do. The rest of the deck is either finding the Hammer, protecting the Hammer, or just beating your opponent down. So, first up, you have things you can equip to. Fireblood Charger. As long as Fireblood Charger is equipped, it has haste. So you can play this on turn one, or just say play um, Sigarda Zayd on 1, play Fireblade Charger, play Hammer, equip, bash your opponent for 11. Um, if they happen to kill it, they take that amount of damage to the face. Generally, pretty good, pretty good overall, but a little bit fragile if this is the only card you can equip it to. Otherwise, Core Blade Master, 1-1 one, one Double Striker, also happens to be a Warrior, Shock Face. Um, tends to work out fairly well, but, you know, once again... Only so many warrior creatures you can equip to. Finally, Season of Hollow Blade, 3-1, you can make it indestructible. Seems a little bit better against decks like Rakdos. Okay, so that's what we're equipping at 2. How are we finding it? So obviously, you have 4 copies of Hammer. About a 40% chance to find it in your opening hand. You can mulligan a little bit, but keep in mind you do need the other half of the combo. Another card, Fighter Class. Enchantment, never enters the battlefield. Search your library for an equipment, reveal it, put it in your hand. Um, equip costs two less, and then creatures you control have only one target of a creature may block if this combat is able. Really, you're playing it to be able to find your hammers. Okay, so you got eight copies of hammer, two copies of open the armory. Search the library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. Not as good as it's the uh, counterpart played in modern, which is escaping me at the moment, but it's a one mana search for an equipment. This is a two mana. No Stone Forge Mystics or anything like that in the format. So, you gotta do what you gotta do. 10 copies of Finding Hammer, 12 things to equip it to, 8 ways to equip it. Pretty good recipe for success. Uh, the rest of the deck, you have things like Alcide of Life's Bounty to help protect it. You have Rabbit Battery. That just sounds creepy. To give your, give your creatures haste. Lion Sash as ways to eat things out of the graveyard and grow your creature. Lizard Blades, equipped creature has double strike, and it's a reconfigure. And then four copies of Hammer, two copies of Shadow Spear, pretty solid overall. Uh, copies of Mutant Vault, notable because it is a warrior, so it does play quite nicely with Resolute Strike. But deck seems a little bit fragile. Don't have a lot of ways to equip the deck. You have to equip eight ways to equip it, ten ways to find it. A little bit of a glass cannon. Can understand why the deck didn't have a huge amount of results, especially when you have a bunch of decks like, I don't know, uh, is it Phoenix floating around, Rakdos mid range, Blue White Control, etc., etc. Decks that interact a lot with what you're doing, uh, Mono Red, etc. Sideboard mostly built towards problems you could see. Portable holes removal, Silence as a way to kind of go for the combo and protect it. Fiend Slayer, good against Rakdos decks. Red Cap Melee, I'm presuming red decks were a big thing then. Mono Red, uh, I think this was still when... Uh, 
Winota was a, in the format, etc. So, you can understand why the sideboard is what it is. But, how has the deck changed that it might be more viable? We're going to see a lot of the same cards, but we're also going to see some new ones. The new ones. Nahiri the Unforgiving. One, up until your next turn. Up to one car target creature, attacks player, fable, whatever. Discard a card, draw a card. Exile target creature or equipment with mana value less than Nahiri's loyalty from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it. That token gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. Okay, well, this is a way to rebuy hammers that might have died, etc. Uh, threatening your opponent with your Sigardo's aids over and over again. But not the most exciting card for the deck. That probably goes to Cacophony Scamp. This is Fireblade Charger on crack. Uh, when Cacophony Scamp deals combat to a ship player, you may sacrifice it. If you do, prolifer prolifer proliferate. When Cacophony Scamp dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So this isn't relying on your opponent to kill it, or you needing a spell to kill it. This is basically, okay, bop, I hit you with a hammer, I sack it, you're dead. Pretty scary stuff. That's a turn two kill. Play this on turn one. Play a cigar to Zade and a hammer. Oops, you're dead. Um, I did see some scuttlebutt on Twitter about that. Uh, I know Doomwake did something about it being a turn two format now. You still have the problem of consistency. Now, you still don't really have any new ways to find the card. You have, obviously, the four copies of Hammer, some copies of Fighter Class, and then a copy of Open the Armory. So, nine or ten ways to find your Hammer. If you look at the modern modern version, for, for instance, you have four copies of Hammer. You have four copies of Urza Saga. You have four copies of Stoneforge Mystic. And then you have between there's an equivalent card of open the armory that's drawing a blank at the moment but that also can see some play so you have 12 to 14 ways to find your hammer now as far as equipping abilities you have the four cigar to zabe and you also have four copies of um the pure steel paladin now a paladin allows you to equip things that are already in play it doesn't require like something like resolute strike being a one-time shot Another card that helps with the equipping is Kemba. Uh, whenever Kemba, Ka Enduring, or other cats enter the battlefield under your control, attach up to one target equipment you control to that creature. Now, you've got cats. There are some variants that have been popping up that play more cats, like Adorn Pouncer and some other stuff, but Kemba on its own is always a way to equip. Comes another lightning rod, gives you another way to equip a hammer that's already in play. Another addition to the deck is Skriev, a Defector Might. Uh, Skriev can't block, has Toxic 1, decent abilities. However, Phyrexian or 1 White, choose a color. Another target creature you control gains Toxic 1, whatever, and Hexproof from that color until end of turn. Can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. So effectively... This becomes almost Giver of Runes. Almost. Now, number one, it's legendary, so you can have multiple of these in play. And two, you have to pay either mana or life. Now, obviously, if you're against mono green, mono white, mono blue, you know, deck like Rakdos, it's, their removal is primarily black or red. You know, name the right color, your opponent's dead. Whoopsie. Um, certainly helps with the thing, with getting your creature through. Now, you still kind of have the infect modern problem. If there's a bunch of Doom Blades in the format, your deck's a little bit worse. You don't have the backup plan of something like Urza Saga or obviously Loris being banned. So, you kind of have to play a game of Protect the Queen. So... It's certainly a threatening deck. It can kill on turn two. There are multiple draws now out of this deck that kill on turn two. Uh, you have Cigar Aid and any combination of these plus a hammer. You're dead on turn two. However, it is offset by the fact that this deck doesn't have the grinding capabilities. But, you know, if your opponent's not expecting it, doesn't have a Fatal Push of their deck or a Wild Slash or something, they're just dead. So... 
you know, this plays around in a lot of decks like Mono Green. Kind of threatens the an ability similar to Grease Fang to just close out the game in a hurry. And, you know, it's certainly a deck you should keep an eye out going forward. Now, whether it has legs or whether this is just kind of a flash in the pan that people are testing, much like, you know, something like Tybar and Elves. Still a very powerful deck as far as the rest of the sideboard. Um, you have Pithing Needles to shut down annoying things. You have Running Volley for the usual Gambit, Spirits, Humans, Grease Fang. Uh, additional removal like much of other Rolly Light and Portable Holes. You have Lion Sash as a way to attack the graveyard and be another threat. Uh, rest in peace to deal with any type of is it Phoenix or Grease Fang nonsense. God's Willing as a way to protect your creature. And then Nahiri Arid Ancients. Uh, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a warrior or equipment card from among them. Put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And then you can put a plus one plus or create a plus one plus one white warrior creature token. You may attach equipment you control. So nice way in the grindy matchups this is kind of a way to recoup a lot what you have going on and we have one more build that we'll take a look at which is very similar to this but slightly different all right this is the version i was talking about we get to play a copy of gigantha on the sideboard uh but you know a lot of the same things going on here four copies of open the armory four copies of um hammer only eight ways to find hammer a little bit of a risk but uh, this one has a little bit more protection with God's Willing and Loron's Escape. You also have Shkri, three copies of Skriev here, four copies of Kemba. So you have 12 ways to equip your creature, eight ways to find it. Not terrible overall, but you probably do want, you know, a couple copies of Fighter Class, even though it's not the best card in the world, um, just to be able to consistently find your hammer. Uh, you have four Cacophony Scant, four Fireblade Charger, and four copies of Kemba as creatures really do atta to attach it to. So a little late on creatures in this build, um, but a lot more protection. So maybe that plays out better overall. Definitely a deck we're going to have to test here in the coming weeks. Um, it's certainly a deck that could change the balance of the format a little bit. It's your first deck that can really threaten to kill before turn three in the format. So that's kind of scary. When people start seeing those kind of numbers, they think it's Modern Light or needs Band, yada, yada, yada. We'll see how the deck shakes up. Uh, rest of the sideboard, um, you're seeing a lot of the same things. Chain to the Rocks, more removal spells. Lauren's Escape, way to protect your creatures. Portable Hole interaction for early mana dorks or creatures. Running Volley, Wear Terror when you need to blow up enchantments or artifacts. Sword of Forge and Frontier, when a crypt creature deals combat damage to a player, Exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards. You may play an additional land this turn. Crypt creature has plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and green. Probably a solid equipment overall in the grinding matchups. So, definitely a card to keep aware of. It's just a matter of what. Uh, you could also play things like Shadow of the Scalds, um, Experimental Frenzy. There's a whole lot of different grindy cards you can play. Um, it's just a matter of finding the right balance for kind of decks like Rakdos and Is It Phoenix and kind of hoping the like ha deck has legs. Now, overall, I have not seen a lot of this deck in action yet. It's kind of a newer deck to the format overall. I have seen a little bit. I think Doomwakes put out some work with it. I know one or two other people I've seen have some scuttlebutt on Twitter about it. I will personally have to play it a little bit to have some idea of how consistent it is, but definitely a deck you should be aware of and keep an eye on as Phyrexia, all will be one, continues to move forward in the Pioneer format.